everybody, this is Thomas here with a, uh, another graph editor tutorial with you. Uh, as you can see from today, we are going to be talking about the idea of video reference. Now, here's the wonderful thing about uh, this uh, tutorial is that this is actually uh, uh, this is this recording is actually after I had already done the tutorial. For some reason, you know, I, I had done like the best tutorial I've ever done, and nothing was recorded. I mean, this is kind of a nice thing because there's a lot of background noise on the last video, but still, it's kind of annoying. Anyways, just a little background information. If the sound that you're hearing does not quite sync up with what's happening on the screen, it's because I'm narrating over the video. I'm watching it with you and trying to explain what's going on. So here we have a quick time video of um, just a webcam recording of me doing the same uh, basic concept over and over again in real life in uh, as many different ways as I can. And uh, the reason you want to do this is because it's a really easy way to create uh, keyframe poses. Because you can, you can find the ideas that you like and implement them uh, in a realistic way. So not only does it help you to create realistic and interesting poses, but it also allows you to create proper timing. So it, does, it, it takes away a lot of the work that would normally be there if you just try to animate from scratch without any sort of reference. In general, I'd say like 95% percent of the time if you want a really good looking animation you want to have some sort of reference to go from unless you are really experienced but even then most professionals still use reference um yeah if, if it's good enough for pixar it's good enough for me yes that's the way i've said it so anyways uh, i think here i'm pointing out <clears throat> which pose i like the best uh which uh, uh sh i should say which take uh i appreciate the most and uh, what we're going to be looking at and uh, as as we're looking at this, um, just so you know, this is QuickTime. Uh, I did not upgrade to QuickTime Pro, uh, but it's it's not that expensive. I probably should. Um, the important thing here is that we can look through things frame by frame and find the pose that we want using the arrow keys in QuickTime. So we've got our first, our this is our second pose here where he's standing, and then our third pose right there is. Uh, that would be another keyframe because it's a, a dramatic change in motion. And then finally we have the fourth pose here. And you can see there's a lot of different changes in shape happening in the spine, which is always awesome. You know, the more interesting the changes in shape is, the more interesting your animation is going to be, and it, it challenges you to push your animation. So um, this is, after all that work has been done, um, what I did is I took four frames or four yeah four frames in source filmmaker and just put all the, the key poses right next to each other you could see the um the proper cameras on the right and the work cameras on the left there and just ignore the legs because they're not going to be in the shot um so when you're um and i i realize that you know i'm not showing myself creating all these poses but for the sake of time it really doesn't matter how you get from point A to point B. All that matters is that you get the poses that you want and in a way that makes sense. Like, um, you know, everything is, is you know, not just matching what the video reference is showing you, but you, you also know in the back of your mind how the hands, the, the hips, and everything are getting uh, between the poses, or you have a game plan for what you're going to be doing. Um, what I'm talking about here is what's important when you're doing poses. It's important to have a good silhouette around the character, you know, so everything's very visible. Of course, it's got to be framed properly in the shot. Um, you know, um, like I was saying before, you know, you, you can scrub through these. And one thing you will notice is that there's a big motion of change between the second pose and the third pose with that right hand. And uh, that's going to be something that we're probably going to have to create an in-between for. But everything else, uh, just these four frames that we've created in this specific example. Um, and uh, unfortunately, with the audio that we lost, there was also some music that went along, along with it. This is actually a shot from Make a Red Out of You, which is a project we're working on. Um, but yeah, I mean, so when, when you're doing poses, you know, you want to be very specific about because this is where you're going to the idea of a pose is that you're actually holding it in place for a certain period of time there's the audience is going to remember those key poses every all the other motion is just getting from one pose to the other so you remember about three tutorials ago um, we talked about uh, pose to pose animation 
more we were just talking about like I think we just did a scout jumping and that was just to get over the overall concept now this is more from an acting standpoint the audience only has time especially in a shot like this where I think we're only going to be spreading out over like four or five seconds to absorb a certain amount of information and the more movement you have on the screen like I've seen examples of people where just every body part is moving all over the place when you do that not only does the audience not know where to look, you don't know where the audience is going to be looking. So you could put some really important animation like, you know, a character in the background getting shot. That's like the joke. But if your character in the foreground is still moving around and he's not standing still, a lot of people are just going to miss it. And that's not what you want. As a director, since you're directing yourself when you're using Source Filmmaker, <clears throat> it's really important for you to keep those kind of things in mind. So when we're doing this pose to pose animation, and by the way, you'll notice when I'm posing the soldier out, I'm not uh, exactly duplicating what's happening on the right there with the reference shot. And the reason for that is because the character is not built realistically. He's got giant hands, which you never want to get anywhere near the head because his head is tiny in comparison to the hand. <laughs> But uh, but also, the way his shoulders and body is so thick and set up, you just can't do what you'd normally do with longer human arms and a thinner human body. Uh, anyways, um, whatever I was talking about before, I've forgotten it. But <laughs> uh, Anyways, let's look back at the, the posing animation. So you can see, you know, if you look at these poses, the spirit of the pose is there. That's the important thing. Um, you'll also notice... Uh, one thing I am noticing here, look at how much the hips are moving around. When you would be animating on your own doing something like this, you if you weren't following a reference and know that the, the hips would swing that much from the left to the right in just a short period of time, you'd think, oh, that's too much motion. There's no way I could get from there to there and make it look good. It'll look like Speedy Gonzales or whatever. But no, I mean, you've got a reference video right there to surprise you and say, wow, I never would have considered that if I hadn't looked at the reference video. I didn't realize that the hips could move that quick with, you know, so little upper body motion. So, you know, that's uh, one of the reasons why reference is so important. So at some point uh, in this video, it will jump ahead to when I've done some uh, more animation. Um, but for right now, I think we're still looking at the posing here. Um... I'm curious what else there is to talk about. Obviously, when you're doing stuff live, you know, it's harder to gather your thoughts and you're more responding to what you're doing at the moment. So some of um, the amount of time we've got here may not nece be necessary for what I'm talking about now. Uh, I think we're talking about the hand right now and the in-between. Yeah, that's what we're doing. So we're going to need to create a second pose, like I said, between the, the, what's currently the second and the third. So that's what we've got right there on the right, because to get from there to there, that, there's no obvious motion happening. And, um, and that's, you know, when we're doing pose-to-pose -pose animation, obviously those first four keyframes were way more important. But now, before we start animating everything, you know, we're going to want to do that. So the easiest way to, to do this is you want to just have everything on spline and then separate the keys like I'm doing now. That way, aside from the hand, everything else is pretty much staying on that point A to point B motion that we want because we've got the keyframes for everything else already. We just need another keyframe for the hand. So you see what's happening there. I'm leaving the body alone, and it's just doing its natural motion. It looks nice the way it is, and I might tweak it a little bit, like maybe move it a little bit to the left or to the right just to get the timing to look nice. Like, see there, I'm counter-animating a little to the left, so he does a quick rotation at the end, more of a, a fast out, or a slow in, I should say. Um, um, but for the hand, we're going to do a completely separate pose. This is just a little bit of tweaking I'm doing here, counter-animating to match, again, the reference that we're seeing on the right. Um, okay, so now we're going to do the hand as soon as I've finished up tweaking the head with whatever it is I'm doing there. Yeah, I'm just tweaking. 
that's the one unfortunate thing is when we're live, you can see what my thought process is. But you know what? We're going to stop talking about it because there's no use crying over spilt whatever, whatever the phrase is. So here we are. We're making the second in-between, and I want to point out really quick how much I hate IK ands. And I'm, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm copying and pasting the finger positions there so that he's pointing the whole time. Um, this rotation that we're going to be doing with the hands would have been made a hundred times easier if I could just rotate the bone on the upper arm <laughs> rather than moving this hand around. Because uh, what I found this whole time is I had to just pretty much keyframe this hand almost every frame just so I, you know, there wasn't any arm breakage. Um, you know, because the close, you notice, you see what's happening when the hand gets close to the head, all of a sudden you get that little weird effect around the hands, pop, pops back into place. So, just certain things you got to deal with. Certain rigs, every rig is different. But yeah, uh, if it was forward kinematics, which I technically could have switched back to, but uh, for the purpose of time, I just decided to stay in there. But yeah, I mean, think about it this way: if you're if you're taking your hand, say, put your hand, you know, by your side, and then put it above your head. Pretty much that entire motion is just the upper arm rotating. Um, whereas when you're animating the hand, if, if you're animating the hand, then you gotta have the hand down by your side, then you have to have the hand up, you know, up way in front of you, uh, and then as it's rotating, and then you know, you have to have the hand up here. And if you have any translation in the hand, like say the shoulder is rotating, that makes things even more difficult, where normally you just rotate the shoulder, like I'm doing now. Uh, and the upper arm, now I've got to do a weird counter animation thing where moving the shoulder has no impact on where the hand is. Um, let's see here. So, following what we're doing now, so yeah, so what we're doing, so we've got that second in between pose, and now it's a lot more clear. I think we're going to need another one. Honestly, it's still unclear how you get from the hand behind the, the back to there, but at least we've got more of a feel for the timing. I think what we're going to do here in just a second is move on to that. Now that we have the keyframes that we want, we've done the pose to pose, we've used the reference, we can, if we want, use the reference specifically for timing. I think in this example I kind of just feel it out because I'm doing it to a soundtrack and I know what my timings are, that I want to be are, but normally if you weren't doing a soundtrack, you'd want to like frame by frame through the quick time movie and find your own specific timings. So um, I think I'm going to stop it here. I, you know, I apologize that this happened. Um, a, a lot of the rest of this tutorial would just be watching me move forward with this shot and show you how I animated the rest. But I will um, go back here and just show you how it turned out just, just so you can see, you know, compared to the reference video that we saw how it turns out. But yeah, but what I would be doing here is I'd be taking those keys and translating them around the shot to where I want them. The important thing to remember is that these are keyframes and some of them I'm going to want to hold. Again, remember, if if I just move, spread those out, we're going to get constant motion, which we may not necessarily want. There may be certain, you know, we may want the audience looking at the hand, looking at the head. Whatever's moving on the screen, that's what people are going to be looking at. So, um, and of course, you know, you don't want like the hand in front of the head. There's all sorts of things you want to keep in mind. So in this example, let me just extend this tutorial a little longer so you can watch what I'm doing here. So what I'm doing is I'm timing the point to the line to defeat. And um, I'm just taking these keys and I'm spreading them out to, um, you know, get that timing right. And you can see, of course, the source filmmaker still doesn't know what to do between um, the hand being above his head and the hand being by his side. And we'll have to make another keyframe there. Um, we don't need to hold, you know, duplicate that last frame because it just holds to the end anyways because there's nothing after it. But for the um, the hand going up, that's all. So from the hand going to the side, the hand going up to the hand pointing, uh, that's all one motion as we saw in the reference video, so we're not going to hold any poses. But you'll notice that we had a point in time where the soldier turned and he kind of stood there a little bit before he went to defeat. And uh, we're going to want to duplicate that pose over a certain period of time. That's what we call holding a pose. And uh, a lot of people, um, and of course you, you want idle motion. You don't want just like 
you know, to flatten out the keys and then have a hold where you just have nothing happening for like three seconds. You want to have idle animation, of course, which you can recreate with splines. You could just like take the second, you know, keyframe of the held pose and like tweak it a little bit so that there's just a little bit of idle motion there. Whatever you want to do. So, um, yeah, that's just something I wanted to make clear. I think I already, yeah, this is him walking still. So we're still spreading out these keys and we're just working on the timing. So that's all I'm going to say for now. Again, I apologize that we had this audio issue and I, I can't, I really wanted to walk you through this animation so you can get a feel for my workflow and my, you know, my thought process when I'm animating. But really what this tutorial is about is just to get those general concepts down. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead to the end um, so I can demonstrate the final video. All right, so uh, let's take a look at the final product here. You can see that we have uh, not that many more keys. If you look here, there's not really that many more keyframes than when we originally started, but you can see obviously with a little tweaking and you know a good amount of timing, we've got, a, and like I said, uh, frame by framing that hand, unfortunately. But yeah, you can see everything turned out good. Uh, we've got a general body motion. Uh, I mean, if you look at it, it, yeah, it looks a lot nicer because, you know, I put in some nice timings and, and counter animations and secondary animations in there. But, I mean, all the all the data from those original four frames that we created is all there. And the important thing is that it did so much work for us. Just taking the time to shoot that reference and create those key poses from that, it took me, what, like 10, 15, 20 minutes to do that. And it accomplished 50% of the work of the shot. And that's really, you know, uh, what this is all about and why reference is so important. It's a time-saving measure, one. Two, it creates a guaranteed uh, realism. Uh, of course, you can stretch things however you want. You can make things goofy. You can make things more rigid or stylized. But, you know, you're creating something that's based in reality. And finally, you know... It, it helps you learn more about realism. So anyways, that's the tutorial. Again, sorry for the mistakes, but I hope you enjoyed it.